so how can we connect to different data sources? What are the different types of data sources that you can connect to using Power BI, right? So you can connect to all of these types of files, uh, which are your Excel files, your text files, JSON, XML, and a lot of others. I've only listed down, you know, top four or five, which are very easily recognizable to all of you. Um, you can also connect to other types of uh, databases. So for example, you can also connect to SQL Server, Amazon Redshift, Oracle, IBM NetEase. Some of this may be something you have also primarily worked with. And then you can also connect to the Power BI datasets, which are by default available in Power BI. So Power BI uh, or Microsoft has made available some datasets which can be used for consumption. Uh, Azure, you know, all of the uh, Azure SQL databases or Blob Storage or HD Insights, Spark, you can connect to any of these. Uh, there's also online services like, you know, for example, Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics is something I extensively use as an analytics person. Uh, so these are basically web website measurement tools. Uh, so all of these online services, you know, you're able to connect to these sources as well. Plus there are also other types of uh, files, you know, which don't fall into any of these five categories, but there are also other types of data connections or query, you know, queries that you can uh, integrate. Okay, so let's let's talk about the two types of uh, you know connecting data uh, you know connecting to the data sources. Okay, taking a quick look at the chat again. So Azure is uh, one of the cloud services. Uh, Sia, um, you can probably read a bit more about it. So Azure is very very popular. Uh, you know, it's a it's a cloud services. You know, you're able to host everything on cloud, host your data, applications, uh, storage a lot of other things. Um, but yeah, that's one type of source that you can connect to Power BI. So coming back to the context. Now, there are two ways in which you can connect your data. One is direct query. So let's understand what is direct query. Uh, for example, if you are using, you know, trying to connect to an Excel sheet that's on your uh, laptop or your system, that data may not get updated every now and then, right? Unless you're manually going and update it. But if, for example, imagine a SQL server, which is collecting the data for a retail store transaction. Okay. All the, uh, you know, for example, a Nike store has a point of sale, which is the, which is the, you know, cash register. There are a lot of transaction data that gets captured in that Nike store. And that data at the end of every day is uploaded into a SQL server, for example. Okay. Uh, that is a kind of uh, data source, which gets updated every day. Now at any point, maybe it is also getting updated every hour. Okay. Not just every day, every hour. Uh, which is like more more of real time. Uh, so in those kind of scenarios, you probably need a direct query connection. Why? Because it connects directly to the data source and it's a live connection, which means every time you refresh your dashboard, you will get to see what is the data in the source at this point of time, not what it was yesterday. So if you want real time dashboards, real time analysis or insights, you always need to use direct query uh, and, and use, only, use it only for a source that keeps getting updated. If it's an Excel file that has constant data, you don't need a direct query. You don't need to fetch that data every time because every time you refresh the dashboard, there is a query being sent. Now, what does that mean? Every time you're trying to refresh the dashboard, it takes time for that data to come back. So it affects the performance of the dashboard. Why? Because every time you refresh, it is sending a query, bringing back the most recent data, and then it's showing you the most recent data. Okay. So that's a direct query. Let's look at some more properties. The data is always up to date. So what is in the source is what you will see in the dashboard. Okay. Uh, the refresh time is dependent on the performance of data source. So if the data source has some performance issues, like for example, uh, even if you're directly querying against the data source, so like, for example, if you're writing a SQL query against the data source and trying to fetch it, if it's taking you one hour to fetch it, then your Power BI dashboard will also take one hour to refresh from there, which means the performance of the data source, like for example, what is the average time for a query to go and come back with data? that same time will reflect in your Power BI dashboard also. So the point that I'm trying to make here is if your data source is very slow, then don't go for a direct query because your dashboard will also be uh, a key thing about dashboards, right? Every user would like to have their dashboard refreshed very quickly. They don't want to wait a lot of time before it loads. It supports very large data sets. So it doesn't have uh, no, uh, you know, limitation like one GB or anything. 
it can affect dashboard performance. So we spoke about it. Performance, what is performance? The speed at which the dashboard loads, okay? Uh, now you have another, another uh, way to connect, which is import the data. So you are not directly querying every time you're refreshing. The data is already imported. It's more like a cache memory. If you know the word cache memory, it's something like it's already uh, fetched, it's already there in the memory. And then you just need to query from that memory, which takes, which doesn't take as much time as you want to, you know, query the actual data source, which means, you know, you hit refresh, data gets refreshed instantly, but the data may be stale. When I say stale data, it means it could be old. It may not be up to date. Okay. So whenever you are updating the data in the Excel sheet and then importing, you need to probably import every now and then. Okay. Uh, so for example, how usually people do it when they have import data is with the frequency that the data gets updated, they will also update, you know, have an automated schedule where the data is imported from there, brought into the cache memory so that the reports will work very quickly. You know, you just, uh, do a refresh the dashboard and it gets the data from the, uh, cache memory or wherever it is stored. Now, the only challenge being that, okay, it will have a last updated timestamp, which says probably this was last updated on last Sunday or, you know, last Monday, it won't be real time. So whenever based on the refresh schedule, you know, it can be, uh, a bit slow. So, uh, it, it imports the, you know, the copy of data into power BI. It needs refresh during subsequent usage. So every time you use it, you need to make sure the data is up to date. Uh, if, if it is not automatically updated at the back end, uh, there's a limitation, which is like one GB per data set. Uh, it's a high performance query engine, which means that data will come back very quickly. You know, from a time standpoint, it is faster than direct query, which means the user experience will be better if you have import data. Uh, they won't have to wait a lot of time before the dashboard loads and you have better transformation options. So what are these transformation options? Um, so that's about the two ways in which you can connect to your data. You can also create a blank query. So, you know, rather than uh, using the your default data source connection options that are available, you can also write a query. So this is something you may not have to do when you are a starter, uh, because this is for the advanced users who, who like, I mean, who like querying, making a lot of customizations in how they want to fetch the data, uh, rather than using it on the user interface where you do a lot of, you know, mouse clicks and change the data, you query everything. So if you're a coder, you can also learn power query, or it is also known as M query, uh, which is a fairly complex and a robust query language, uh, which you can learn and customize the way you want to import it. The possibilities are a lot. Uh, for example, you know, you know, tools like Python or languages like Python, for example, you know, because there are limitless possibilities because you're able to code and customize, you know, there, there's nothing that's limiting you. So similarly, Power Query also enables you to customize a lot and have a lot of uh, customizations, but we're not going to go into Power Query because that's like a bit more advanced. We look at the basics. So let's take a quick look at how I've downloaded. So let's get started. Uh, let's go into this exercise where we are going to connect to a data source. Okay. So I also have power BI open at my end uh, and I've, I'm sharing my screen. So if you are working on power BI, please come back to the zoom. Okay. Uh, just, I'm going to show you very quickly how we are going to do this. And I'm also going to explain some of the additional steps, which you won't find in the exercise document. So keep this exercise document open if it's not open. Okay. Uh, and then come back to the zoom screen. So I'm going to explain how we can connect a new data source here. Uh, so if you are on the home tab, uh, you will see these uh, options, which says get data, recent sources and enter data. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get data, which is where I can actually bring in a new data source. So if you hover over it, you get a help text also. Okay. Uh, I'm going to click on get data and then wait for the pop-up to come up and the pop-up says, you know, these are the different types of data that I can capture, right? And and some of this we already spoke about, you know, in the in the slide before that these are some of the types. If you want to search for something, you can always search for it over here. If you want to check quickly, for example, if Google Analytics is a source, which we spoke about earlier. So yeah, there's Google Analytics. Um, for now, we are going to connect to Excel, which is the simplest way of connecting to data. So I'm going to click on Excel. I'm going to click on Connect. So on Excel connect. And then I have this set of data, wherever you have downloaded, probably it's in your downloads folder. So go to that, uh, you know, you can complete the exercise. I'll give you time to do the exercise. You, you can pay attention to the screen right now. Okay. Uh, 
for now i'm going to load uh, the sales data okay or let me load the multi level data let's do that so multi level data click on open and it will give me another pop up i'll just wait for that to come up and then it gives me a screen which says no item selected for preview so i need to select which sheet should i load now if your excel sheet has multiple sheets sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 it will show all of those over here and it will ask you which ones to load so you need to basically select it and then when you select it you see a preview okay uh, so uh, this is a preview shows what data actually looks like so you can see it has you know bikes accessories miscellaneous these are the three categories that are getting repeated for uh, multiple cities one is a seattle portland vancouver okay uh, so these are some of the cities and there are years and there is some kind of value here so let's assume that this is quantity value okay uh, so this is the type of data set that you are getting it's not a very clean data set but we will come to that and figure it out what to do with the text right so this is here now there are two options where it says load and transform data okay now what is load load is when you want to load the data as it is without making any changes or transformations if your excel file is pretty clean okay transform data is where you know before loading it i want to clean it up somehow uh, and you know so i'm going to show you both the options for now i'm going to click on load and what happens is you know the 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 query is you know the the data is getting loaded and it it comes up like this okay now the data is loaded and you see on the right in my fields pane you see this table that was loaded plus all of the columns that it has okay now what i would like to do now is go in and make really come to that transformations part but the loading the data should be very very clear if data visualization was an assembly line so you know what is an assembly line right so ford introduced the assembly line now, this is not exactly same as the assembly line but if a data visualization had a set of steps that had to be performed in a particular order how would it look like so i'm going to take you through those steps in a typical scenario okay so the first step would be asking the right questions this is very very important why do you need to ask the right questions um, before you start creating a chart or before you start even connecting excel to your power bi the first thing you should do is uh, you know what are the questions that you should be answering through your data that is very very important for you to understand and if you are not the person to whom the data belongs or for example if you are a if you are an agency uh, you are probably having a client okay so a client will give you okay this is my data set create charts and give it back to me so then go back and ask the client what questions are you trying to answer you know what business problems are you trying to solve through this dashboard right that is very important to understand first okay because don't ask this question at the end when the dashboard is created because if the fundamental questions are not asked at the beginning you will have to go back and change the entire dashboard everything the data modeling everything because the questions need to be defined at the start so that's the first one check available data points right so you need to check okay i have these set of questions i need to answer these set of questions do i have all the data points that i you know that i need to answer these questions you should check that at the second step and the third step is to collect that data so in case you don't have access to that uh, you know you need to get that excel or get access to that whichever system that uh, you know stores and preserves that data get access to that and you know make sure you have access to other systems also for getting other data if you need it right uh, because uh, usually in organizations when you have to get access to something sometimes it takes time like you raise a request two weeks three weeks you know sometimes it takes time to give you get you access to that because you have to be part of a group you know ad group sometimes you have to be part of an ad group or sometimes you have to uh, set up some kind of environment like for example you know if you are pulling it through excel through uh, you know for example there is sql server analysis cube and if you want to bring it through a cube you need to put in the connection details credentials and probably somebody has to create your id and stuff like that so all of these things we are not going to do today okay so today all your, uh, your your collection of data is very simple you just need to go to the google drive and download but i'm telling you this so that when you go to an actual scenario when you are actually going to do this work 
then you need to make sure that all of these steps are covered right uh, and uh, so my role is more of, of like a consultant so i have to make sure that you know i need all of these steps are followed and nothing is missed and nothing is you know pending uh, once you collect that data then what you need to do is clean and transform that data so if you remember uh, last time uh, saturday we we did a lot of transformation steps so like i said Power BI has a lot of basic transformation steps. It still doesn't have a lot of complex ones. There are other ETL tools out there which can prepare the data before you load it into a Power BI. So there are other automated tools like uh, you know SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS, or uh, Talend, or you know there are a lot of others. Uh, so the, those tools can clean it up. Or if you want to do basic transformations, you can still use Power BI to transform that. Uh, so before this, there's also, you know, transform plus model also, you need to model. We also did modeling and then you need to choose how to show that data, like what kind of visualization we are going to use, which chart are you going to use and that kind of stuff, because based on the data that you're going to represent, the chart type is going to change and we'll be covering, we'll be talking a bit more about that in the, in the coming. So choose how to show data. And then the next step is to combine the different charts and create a dashboard kind of view. Like, you know, on the top, I'm going to show these three uh, on the middle. I'm going to show these two charts and at the bottom, I'm going to show some detailed views and tables or whatever. Right. Um, and then finally, you know, second last step, I kind of uh, is like design and publish the dashboard. So design it all, pin the charts to the dashboards, which we are going to show you later and then publish it. Uh, why do you need to publish it so that more people can access it? You know, your team members or others within the organization or even your clients for that matter. And you can analyze the data and find insight. So if you are an analyst, uh, your job doesn't stop at creating the dashboard. You also need to look into the data, find insights and share those insights with the client. That's when you're adding additional value to the business and actually people, uh, you know, people actually have that sense that if I'm paying this guy, you know, maybe $40 or $45 per hour, uh, you know, that, that may be the contract between the agency or the, or the uh, you know, the, the client. I'm just giving random numbers here, but if I'm paying this guy like so many dollars per hour, you know, uh, if he's just creating the charts, it doesn't make sense. I need him to give me additional value. And that additional value is delivered when you're giving those. Then uh, what is PBIT versus PBIX? This is not something we have covered. So, uh, when you save a Power BI file, uh, you can save it in two formats. So I would recommend that you go back to Power BI and save the file. Uh, when you save it, uh, so when you click on save as, I'm going to apply all the changes that I did because I'm in the Power Query editor. Uh, all the changes are going to reflect now. Okay. So you see, there are two options here where I can save it as either a PBIX file or I can save it as a template file. What is the difference between PBIX and PBIT? PBIX has all the uh, steps that you did, everything that you did, you know, all the charts that you created, everything that you did in Power BI plus the data. Okay. PBIT is everything that you did, all the steps, all the, uh, you know, all the visualizations, all the charts, uh, all the relationships or the models, which we'll talk about tomorrow in more detail, everything minus the data. Okay. So the actual data is missing in PBIT. So why is it called a template file? It is like a template where, you know, if there is, if there are 10 people with the same type of Excel sheet, you need to have the same type of Excel sheet where, you know, you have a, a same schema. It's called a schema where you have uh, column one, first column, two, first column, three, first, you know, everybody has that kind of a sheet and they want to do some kind of, uh, you know, uh, data operations. You can save a PBIT file with everybody. And what they will be able to do is open up Power BI, load that kind of load that Excel sheet. And in immediately it gives all the uh, transformations, the steps, the charts, everything is ready. You just need to load the data. All the steps are done once people can use it like a template to create a custom dashboard. That's already, you know, in a particular format. So that's where templates are used. It has all the steps that you did, like your applied steps over here, all the charts you're going to create tomorrow or maybe in the next session. And then it will save it 